Everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice right now, every single one of us has some kind of pain that we went through or some kind of suffering that we went through or some kind of some kind of trauma or some kind of drama that we went through when we were children or when we were, were a teenager or even in our 20s. Every single one of us. It doesn't matter what position you are. It doesn't matter what color you are. It, it doesn't matter where you're from or where you are at right now. Every single one of us has some kind of pain inside of us. I tell you this, some of us, we try to cover up our pain and our suffering from our childhood. We try to cover it up by taking alcohol, by drinking alcohol, by doing pills, by taking drugs. But before you turn off this video, this video is not just about people who take drugs and people who drink alcohol, no. It's about people that are trying to cover up their pain and their suffering with just anything. Not just drugs and alcohol, no. I've noticed that people try to cover up their pain and their suffering by getting a new job. And there's nothing wrong with getting a new job. But some people, when they get a new job or when they get a better job or when they get promoted, what happens is, is that like they say, well, this job will, will get rid of my pain. This job will get rid of my suffering from my childhood. They say getting this new car, getting this brand new car will, will help ease my pain from my childhood. And yes, you can thank the Lord for that car. Or some people say, well, you know, getting this new house. Thank the Lord for this new house. Thank the Lord for this new house. And they think that getting a new house, moving into a new neighborhood, is going to get rid of their suffering, get rid of their pain that they had since their childhood, that they never got over. They never got over. And you can truly tell sometimes, you can tell sometimes that someone has pain. Every single one of us, we've been through something in our childhood. We had a, a great loss. We saw, we, we went through trauma. We went through pain. Every single one of us. So basically, we're basically all in the same place. But the question is, do we stay in the same place? The question is, is that like, where do you go for healing? Where do you go to get a new life? Where do you go to be born again? Where do you go? Do you go to a house? Another house? Do you go get another car? Do you go to another state to get a better job that makes, you know, $150,000 a year? Where do you go? And you can thank the Lord for all those things, but the Lord is looking for you to be born again so you can get rid of that pain. So you won't be raised up in that pain and having bitterness towards people or having unforgiveness towards people. Or when certain events happen in your life in the present right now, in the present right now, it won't bring up old memories of the way, of the way that you were or, or, the, or the way that certain things happened in your life when you got that pain. It won't bring up old memories. I tell you what, man, because there's a, there's a lot of people in pain. And they think they're not in pain. Again, they try to cover it up with everything in the world. And it's okay for you to, to thank the Lord for you know new house and new job. But the Lord is looking for you to look towards Him. Not look towards that job. To look towards Him, not look towards a new house. Some people, they, even, they thank the Lord for their children. And they look towards their children to receive a new life. But what happens is, is that like since the parent is in so much pain and so, so much suffering and they're in bitterness or they're in darkness or they think about suicidal thoughts. What happens is that like it passes on to the child. They hope it doesn't pass on to the child, but it still passes on to the child because the child is inspired by their mother. The child is inspired by their father. And this is how family curses just pass on from generation to generation. And people don't even know it because people don't even know they're still in pain. They, they, they just call it normal. They just call it regular. They just call it, call it, this is just who I am. You can, you can tell. You can tell. You can. Because like people think about, oh, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in my dark place. Oh, oh, look, I'm, I'm in a hole. Or, oh, I wish I was dead. I wish I would, I would disappear. Those people, they're still in pain. And they say that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they don't go to Jesus Christ. But when the Lord blesses them with a new car, when the Lord blesses them with a new job, they go to those things, but they don't go to the Lord Jesus Christ. They go to the Lord Jesus Christ, say thank you, and then walk away towards their new car, towards their new house. And that's what they do. And I mean, God is, God, God is blessing you with those things because he wants you to see how good he is and how, how merciful he is and how gentle he is. And, and he wants you to receive his spirit. 
so you could be born again. And that's all there is to it. But people are not receiving his spirit. Instead, they're just receiving the physical things of him. They're receiving the physical blessings and they're saying, oh yeah, thank you, Lord. And then they walk away from his spirit. They walk away from the spirit of God. They walk away from the Holy Spirit. They don't want to live by the Holy Spirit. And that's what I've been trying to say. I, I mean, God put this on my heart for a week. And I've been trying to, trying to find out how to put this all together for a whole week. So people can truly understand what they're doing to themselves. They want, want to receive the physical things of God. But they don't want to receive the spirit of God that changes lives. And that's what I'm saying. You have to truly understand that God wants you to be born again of his spirit. Not born again of a car that's going to rot eventually. A car that's going to break down eventually. A house that's going to have trouble eventually. Whether it be inside the house or outside the house. Yes, God wants you to have children. Thank the Lord for children. But God doesn't want you saying, well, I now I have a new life because I have children. Th those children are just adding on to your life. They're in, in increase in your life. It doesn't mean that you have a new life. And for those of you that are so proud to be mothers and so proud to be fathers and so proud to be an adult that y'all think that y'all can do whatever you want to do and abandon the Lord Jesus Christ and abandon God and abandon the spirit of God. I tell you what, man, you guys are totally prideful. No wonder you guys don't learn from, from, from the Lord Jesus Christ because you guys turn your backs on Jesus Christ and then God turns his back on you, you know, because God turns his back on the proud. If you're so prideful in your parenthood that you turn your back on Jesus, on God and on Jesus Christ, then God's going to say, okay, you're too proud. Now I have to turn my back on you. Therefore, you're not learning from God. And that's how it happens. And then when God blesses you, he, trying, he shows you the mercy and the grace. He's trying to bless you right then and there with, 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 his, with just, just anything. Things just happening. Someone pays for your meal or someone, someone gives you free gas nowadays. Someone gives you a car. Someone blesses you with this, that, and the third. And then you say, thank you, Lord. And then you turn your back on the spirit of God. I've seen it many a times. And I'm sick and tired of seeing it. I'm sick and tired of people saying, I love the Lord. But yet, they turn their back on his very spirit. They turn his back on the scriptures. They don't study the scriptures at almost every single day. They don't put it as a priority. Instead, they put the things, the things that God has given them as a priority instead of putting his spirit as a priority. And I've seen it so many times and people aren't understanding. People just don't, don't get it. Because they don't understand God because they don't study the scriptures. Yeah, they may know the scriptures from here, here and there. But they don't live by the scriptures. They don't find it that important. Therefore, they don't find the spirit of God that important to change their lives. And that's why they're still stuck in pain. That's why they still got suffering in their lives. And they don't call it suffering. They just call it normal. They don't, they don't even call it really normal. They just say, it's just who I am. That's what they do. And people, and I'm telling the truth because I truly love everyone. I want people to open their eyes and see what they're doing to themselves. I want people to open their eyes and see what they're doing to their children and doing to the people around them, man. Sometimes some people even take advantage of the people around them. They get in so much pain. They just, they just want attention for themselves. They want people to pay attention to them, but they don't, they don't want to pay attention to God. They don't want to reach out to God. Instead, they want people to pay attention to them. But their family relatives, oh, look at me, I'm in my dark place. And then your family members and your friends try to point you to the Lord Jesus Christ, but you don't go to Jesus Christ. Like, what's going on? What happened? I thought you were a Christian woman. I thought you were a Christian man. Why aren't you going to Jesus? Why aren't you opening up the scriptures and studying the scriptures? Why aren't you letting Jesus know of your burdens, of your pain, of, of your suffering that you've been through? Why aren't you doing that? What happened? What's going on here? It's because you believe in his things can change you, but you don't believe that his spirit can change you. And that's what's happening. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter what I say. It's just a matter of what I see. I see, I see it going on and, um, and you wonder why so many people are in pain and they stay in pain for weeks and months on end. And it's because they rely on the physical things, but they don't rely on the things that they don't see. 
They don't rely on God. They don't rely on the angels that are protecting them. And I'm not saying worship angels, but I'm saying that God sends his angels to kind of guide us and direct us and say, go this way, go that way. And then, and then kind of just guards us. God sent them on assignment. And then people don't even believe that. Instead, they believe in black magic and white magic and purple magic and red magic and whatever have you. They believe in the, they, wow. They believe in so much in this world, but they don't believe in the one and only son, the one and only son to change their lives. Uh, I'm going to stop blabbering on. I'm going to start reading here. I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 16 here. Matter of fact, 5, 15. It says here, he, that's Jesus, he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. Christ died so that you can receive a new life, not so that you can stay in your old life. See, this takes faith on your part. Faith on your part. You have to do something. Christ can't do everything. You have to have the faith. That's, that's exactly where it starts, you see. But even before you have faith, Jesus Christ already died. Jesus Christ already died on the cross. So do you believe that you can receive a new life since he died on the cross and got rose from the grave by the power of God? Do you believe that you can receive a new life from him? That's the question. A new thinking, a new speaking, a new walking in the spirit. Do you believe that? I'm going to continue on. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human stand, from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. And that's how some people are thinking of him now, from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Now, let me explain something to you. I want to I explain this just so everyone can understand. The Spirit of God that will, is living in you or potentially will live in you. He's going to give you a new life, a new way, a new way of living, a new way to see things. Because what's going on is that people think that because they get a new car, a new house, a new, uh, they move to a new state, they move, to, they go, go and get new physical things. They think that they they got a new life now. But God wants you to receive His Spirit so that you can have a new life. Again, you could be blessed with things, and that's wonderful, but that's not going to give you a new life. God wants to bless you with his spirit so you can get a new life. Bless you right here in your heart. A new life right here. That's where it starts right here. Because you're working from the inside out, right? Not from the outside in. Let God enter here, and that's when, that's when things start to become new in your life. You start to say new words. You start to see things in, in a renewed kind of way. So, 18. And all of this is a gift from God. Who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciliating people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making this, making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Come back to God. You see, people that actually minister the word of God, they're actually saying, just come back to God. They're telling other people to come back to God. Come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come back. Now, for those of you that say you're a Christian and you're not ministering to anyone, you're not witness, witness, witnessing to anyone, you've been going to church for years and not doing any ministering, what are you doing? If you know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you say that the Holy Spirit lives in here and you say that you're a Christian, what are you doing? Why, what's going on? Why aren't you ministering to your brother? Why aren't you ministering to your sister? Why aren't you ministering to family relatives, to your cousin, to your uncle, to your in-laws? Why aren't you ministering to them? It's because you don't know Jesus. It's because you don't have Jesus living here. This is the hard truth. 
I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Because if I sugarcoat it, everyone's just going to say, oh yeah, everything's fine. The way that I'm doing things is fine. No. Everyone that says that they're a Christian, they're not really a Christian. But if you invite Jesus Christ in here and you accept his, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and you truly accept his teachings, what happens is, is that like now you say this teaching is so good. This, this news is so good. I got to tell someone. That's what happens. The scriptures are so good. I got to tell someone. I'm so interested in the scriptures. I receive so much insight and so much knowledge and so much wisdom in the scriptures. Now I have to tell someone. Who are you telling? Are you telling anyone? Or are you just saying, oh yeah, God is good. Or oh yeah, Jesus is good. Is that all you're saying? No. There's much more to that. There's much more to Jesus Christ. There's much more to God. There's much more to the kingdom of God. So if, if all you're saying is God is good and Jesus is good, then, it, then it's like, well, okay, that's, that's good, but there's much more to it. Much more. I'm going to continue reading. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Jesus Christ took our sins and died for our sins. And if we believe that, then that means personally, he died for your sins personally. He died for your sins personally. And then, and then the thing is, is that like, if you believe in Jesus Christ's teachings, since you believed in Jesus Christ, that means, again, you would receive the spirit of God and he would start to change things in you and you start to minister to people. You start to tell people about the good news. You start to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, this is how you would know. You're not ministering the gospel. You're not telling anyone about Jesus Christ. You're only saying that Jesus, oh yeah, Jesus is good and that's it. You're only going to church on Sunday and you don't say the scriptures. Almost every day. Almost every day. Because you're not interested in the scriptures. You want to talk to Jesus and let Jesus know of your burdens. You have to truly understand that Jesus has the power. He has the mercy. He has the grace. He has the he he is salvation itself. And he died for our sins. So, since he died for our sins, do you believe that he died for our sins or not? Okay, if you do, then you have to learn more about Jesus. It's time to study the scriptures. That's what time it is. It's not time to just say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus and then just sit down for the rest of the week until the next Sunday. No. It's time for the Spirit of God to transform you. And I'll tell you this. Since Jesus died for our sins and when we believed in him, and since we do believe in him, for those that don't believe in him, you're going to die in your sins. You. You. They're going to die in your sins. This is why so many people have so much pain and they don't know how to get rid of that pain. Again, they try to get physical things to get rid of that pain. Physical things. The things the things of the world. And yes, God's going to bless you. Yes, I, I keep saying this again and again. Yes, God is going to bless you with things. But God's not telling you to have your problems and have your hurt and have your pain fixed by things. He's saying, come to me. I can heal you. I can, I, can, I can take that pain out if you let me. That is, if you let him. I'll just leave you with this. Please stay in the scriptures. Please. You just come to the Lord Jesus Christ every single day. Stop letting your family history, your family curses, the way that you feel, just, just stop letting that stuff turn your back on Jesus because I, I see what's going on. A lot of people are turning their back on Jesus and they don't even know it. A lot of people are turning their backs on studying the scriptures, on the word of God, and they don't even know it. They don't realize what they're doing. And the world, the world, the, the, the end times are, are, are here. You can see it right in our faces. But people don't realize it because they want to go back to 2019 when everything was just better. Things are not going to get better. Things are going to get worse. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you got a new home this year or last year or the year before. It doesn't matter. Things are going to get worse. You see the, the COVID happen. You see wars happening in Ukraine. You see China wants to take over Taiwan. Eventually, they're going to do it. 
since the world is getting worse and worse and worse, and it is getting worse because you can see the human behavior. Every single one of us needs to just go to Jesus Christ because the world's going to be in chaos pretty soon. It's going to be in chaos. And it may be a time of calmness right now for a time. But what's going to happen when mm, you rely on money so much and then inflation gets so high. Inflation gets so high that you start to do drastic things. You start robbing people's houses. You start stealing from people. You start... Start even murdering people for, and you start, start kidnapping people for ransom, and you start doing just all kinds of crazy things, starts just stealing from people. And, and, and soon enough, those people, the people who you once called a friend or a brother or a sister, now they're not your brother or sister anymore. Because now it's all about you. And basically, it will be every man for themselves. Jesus Christ said to himself, He says, Sin will be rampant and the love of many will grow cold or run cold. So if you don't believe it, then OK, you don't believe it. I, I guess I can't change your mind. But if you do believe in the scriptures, if you do believe what's going on right now and it's just going to get worse and it will get worse, then prepare yourselves. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ every single day. I just want to say I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth and to reveal the truth to you. And if you're offended by this word, then okay, I guess you're offended by the truth. I just want to say I love you guys. Jesus first, God first, and may the kingdom always come first. Stay blessed in the Holy Spirit. Amen.